Hi there, everyone. Welcome to the apocalypse. I'm Chris Bowden. I'll be your guide. This episode of the Apocalypse Toolbox is made possible through the wonderful support of Scott Savage and dozens of people just like you on Patreon. Check the links below in the description to see how you can get involved. Thank you. Hi there, guys. Welcome to the shop. So a lot of you out there are stuck in quarantine, isolated, and bored. And you want to work on all kinds of stuff around your house, but a lot of you aren't really comfortable with which end of the screwdriver has the on handle and you don't spend a lot of time with a wrench in your hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a series of videos here called the Apocalypse Toolbox. And I'm going to take you step by step through some real fundamentals on tools so that you can get an idea of the kind of stuff you need around the house, because you probably don't need a big giant collection of tools. You might want one, and if you do, go nuts. But we're going to cover just what you need to be able to do 90% of the stuff you're going to come across around the house. We're going to make it nice and simple. We're going to cover all the basics, because a lot of the maker how-to shop type channels out there already assume a pretty high level of prerequisite skills. We're going to throw all that away and we're going to talk down to people who aren't super technical nerds that just want to work on their house. They want to fix a door and build a fence and stuff like that. Simple stuff. We're going to talk about what tools you'll actually use, what you actually need, and I'm going to make it so that you can get them without having to leave your house. You're not going to have to violate quarantine or go to a big box store or anything like that. Every single tool that I feature in the entire series, you'll be able to find in the links below in the description. You'll also, they'll be in my Amazon store. You'll also be able to find uh, the link to the Discord, which is a big online community that's totally open and free. And anybody who has any kind of questions about tools or how to use tools or making stuff or doing stuff or anything in the making techie nerdy building world, get in there. We're here to help, okay? So with that, let's start off on our very first video, screwdrivers. Now you may think you know about screwdrivers. For today's video, you're going to need one container of orange juice, one bottle of vodka, and a container of milk of magnesia, because I'm going to show you how to make a Phillips screwdriver. It's the best screwdriver joke I got. It's what, it's what you got. So what I have here is a representative selection of screwdrivers. And I have everything from little itty bitty stubbies like these up to this behemoth, which is really fun. You don't need this. In fact, you don't need most of these. You don't need a big giant long screwdriver. I use this as a breakout point or as a rapier, depending. This is just nerd self-defense. You don't need that. You might need a stubby one, so we'll set that aside. You're definitely not going to be working on live electrical stuff, aren't you? Right, so you don't need the insulated ones. These are a good set of Klein insulated ones. You don't need those. These are a really good set of Weira insulated ones. You don't need these. These could do a thousand volts. You don't need this set of insulated screwdrivers either. We can, we can get those right out of here. Or this set of insulated screwdrivers. You don't need any insulated screwdrivers because you're not going to be doing live hot electrical work at a time when if you hurt yourself, you really don't want to have to go to a hospital right now, do you? Yeah, so if you're an electrician, okay, fine. But if you're watching this video, you're probably not. I work with a lot of electricity, you can tell. So I have a lot of insulated screwdrivers. You don't need those. So we're going to get rid of... You're not going to need any Robertson drive. Robertson is like the Canadian Phillips, basically. They're really popular in Canada. Um, it's the square head, and we'll actually talk about why they were invented, because that's an important thing. Um, they were invented by a guy, guess what his name was? There you go. Um, who was actually a salesman for regular straight blade screwdrivers. And the problem with straight blade screwdrivers is they like to slip out really easily. Like not just cam out, Phillips drivers cam out. Straight blade screwdrivers slip out off to the side. And he put one through his hand and he hurt himself really good. And he's like, that sucked, I can do better. So he did better and he invented the Robertson drive, which won't slip out. They're actually really good. But 
you you might you might need this. You don't need this. This is a captive holding screw. You don't you don't need that. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep a stubby. This is what we used to use before they became you know with batteries. You don't need this. Um, and you don't need that or that or that. We're gonna take it right down. I'm not entirely sure just what the hell this is. I've had it for years. Still not entirely sure what it is. I think it's for picking springs or so. I don't know, it's been in my toolbox for a million years. You don't need those or those or those. Well, yeah, you don't need three of those, that's for sure. Um, you probably won't need a cabinet screwdriver. So we can get those out. Yet another Robertson. Um, you're not going to need the big giant long one, or that, or uh, get down to there, maybe that. Yeah, these are the ones we're going to talk about. Oh, you're not going to need that either. All right, so these are the ones we're going to talk about, and we'll get rid of some of these as we go. Now, overwhelmingly, hands down, in the United States, the number one screw you're going to come across in your house is that, the number two Phillips. There's a bunch of different sizes of Phillips they go down into. They actually ran out of small ones, so they just started. They, you can get like a, a two, a one, a zero, a double aught, which is zero, zero, a triple aught, zero, zero, zero. They get, they get microscopically tiny. Um, but overwhelmingly, 90% of the time, you're going to come across the number two Phillips. Let's zoom in and get a real look at these. All right, so let's just start out with Phillips. We'll take uh, all the other ones out of the equation. So here we have the four basic common sizes of Phillips, one of which is really rare. Um, and two of these you're not even going to need, but let's take a look at them. So we'll bring them all down to the same point. So this is a number one. You want one of those because you'll see this a lot. This is the smaller of the two sizes that you'll see around your house. The number two, which is like 80% of the screws you're going to come across in your house are going to be a number two Phillips. This is a number three, which you don't need. And this is the behemoth number four, which you also don't need. So we can get rid of those. So these are your two Phillips screws, or your two Phillips screwdrivers, and we'll get into how to use them and stuff in a minute, but first I just want to cover basic tools. Um, you're also going to want a couple. Now, I'm going to put a... We'll use the number two Phillips as our size standard. It's got about a quarter inch shaft. So, you're going to want a couple... What I call straight blade, a lot of people I know call it a straight blade screwdriver. It's also called a flathead or a slotted screwdriver because um, they go in slotted screws. And you want a couple of these, maybe more, but definitely these two. You're going to want one that's got a head that's about the same size. And then you want one a little bit bigger. And a really good thing to have, especially on the bigger one, is if you look at the shaft down here, see how that's faceted? Now, Klein frequently has the faceted shaft down here, and that's, that's basically a hex head. You can put a wrench on it, and it'll let you apply more rotational torque. Um, some screwdrivers, like this one, will have a whole, the whole shaft is square, and that lets you put a wrench on it and apply enough torque to break the end off, though overwhelmingly. I probably did that doing the number one thing that you should not do with a screwdriver. Do not use a screwdriver as a pry bar. Don't. You'll see a lot of people tell you not to do that. Nobody ever tells you why. And the reason is really simple. Screwdrivers are really hard, like more so than like a nail or a bolt. You'll learn pretty quick in working, especially with cheap screws and that, that it's very easy to cam them out, to apply more torque rotationally to the fastener than the fastener can withstand, and the fastener will tear, the metal will actually tear, and the screwdriver will turn without the screw turning. And that's called camming out, because you're, you're shredding it out to the side. It's pretty rare, especially with big ones. It'll happen with the little tiny micro screwdrivers, but with the big ones, it's pretty rare that you're going to twist that and make the screwdriver bend. They usually break. 
And if you have a big lever that's designed for putting force in like this, you push forward and turn, and instead you're focusing all that energy out here on the tip and levering like this, the tip will break off. And you can tell because we'll grab another big one of similar size, and you can see just how much of that tip just isn't there anymore. And when those let go, it's in your eye, you're off like a shot somewhere. So yeah, everybody, everybody who works with tools has a big straight blade screwdriver somewhere with the tip missing, and you use it for like prying and shoving and stuff, but this is not a, a pry bar. A, a pry bar or a crowbar is totally different in construction. They're made of much softer metal, um, and they're shaped to be able to take that. They have a, a beefier head on them and stuff like that. Using a screwdriver as a crowbar for anything more than opening a can of paint is a bad idea. You probably shouldn't do that. That's your big safety lesson on screwdrivers. In fact, while we're talking about safety, let's get into some other stuff. But this right here is your basic set. Those are the four that you absolutely need. And you may want to add a big, long lever, serious flathead screwdriver. And you may want to add a little stubby like this. These are pretty common. Um, Husky makes uh, a, both a flathead and a little number two Phillips in the stubbies, and Klein makes a little stubby multi that's got a quarter inch receiver in it that'll take um, a bunch of different size bits. For screwdrivers, you can get separate bits, like the, the head of it and the handle as separate things, and have them be interchangeable. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So let's cover some basic safety. We're going to grab our number two and a basic straight blade. So here's some basic safety that you need to know. The big danger one is the regular flathead screwdriver. These are the ones that want to eat you because when you're putting a screw in there, let's, let's grab a screw and we'll talk about this. So this particular screw is a combination drive screw. It'll take both a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver. So if you're putting this into something, we'll just grab a convenient piece of wood. Most people, when they grab a screwdriver, want to hold it like this. And you can see that's, that's really tippy. It wants to wonk off at odd angles because th there's nothing to hold the screw vertical, except you, and you know, once it's in a ways, once it's started, it'll hold itself and engage. But to start off with, there's nothing to hold this vertical except you, and you've got a sharp screwdriver up here and your hand down below, and you've got to push really hard into it. You've got to get a really, a, the axial force, and it's just, it's a recipe for disaster. And this is how people hurt themselves with screwdrivers. So. The thing to remember, the easy way to get around this, is don't put any part of your body between the screwdriver and the backing surface, the substrate. As long as this can't, like if a screwdriver just pushes on your finger, that's not gonna hurt, that's no big deal. But if there's something back here to block your finger, it's gonna hurt because it turns out we're made of meat. That's it, just meat. So. The way to do this is get your hand out of the way. You don't want to be anywhere below this line, okay? Anything below here is dangerous. Anything up here, you're pretty safe. So keep your hand up above it like that and just guide the screw with your fingertips to get it started. And then once you're in, you can get your hand the hell out of there and just run the screw right down, okay? And you can see right there, I fell off because it's a slotted screw and it's easy to fall off and when you do, you're gonna jam into that, and you wanna be careful depending on what you're working on because you can, it'll absolutely scrape paint or put dents in things. There's a lot of stuff screwed up with the screwdriver. So, let's look at Phillips. The rules are a little different with a Phillips. Um, all the same stuff applies about jamming it through your skin and not being in the, in, in the way of it, but a Phillips will do something that a slotted screw won't. You can do this. You can hold the screw on the screwdriver. If you can't, you probably have the wrong side screw, wrong size screwdriver. Like if I grab a number one, because this screw is for a number two, if I put a number one on there, it'll kind of hold it, but it falls off to the side. 
but even with the wrong size, it'll still hold it. If I try to drive this screw with a Phillips screwdriver, it'll go right in. Now, this is easy because I'm in the same hole, but that fits. And if, if you don't push hard enough with a Phillips head screw, you especially have to push axially. That's the long axis of the tool. You have to push really hard, much harder than a slotted screwdriver. Um, in fact, of all the common screws like Robertson, you don't really have to push at all. Torx, you don't really have to push at all, just enough to keep it in there. But with Phillips, because of the shape, it wants to cam out. It wants to break this connection and rotate on its own this way. And it'll go chunk, 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 and it just sucks. Um, so you have to push really firmly on axis, on the long axis, you're pushing it down really hard. And this makes it, the, more, the harder you're pushing, the easier it is to hurt yourself. So you wanna push pretty hard and run that in. Now I've got that down to fresh wood. If I try to do this with the wrong size, it's not, see, it's just gonna, it's just gonna spin and cam. And I'm gonna destroy the screw or the screwdriver, depending. Um, cheap screwdrivers, will you'll shred the head. Um, so that's, and then taking it out is the exact same system as going in. What you're doing in using this is you're balancing two forces. You're balancing the longitudinal force, the axial force of pushing the screwdriver, which is why you, the screwdrivers have the butt where you put your hand, okay? And you, you hold a screwdriver like that for, for power driving. Um, you're pushing in and turning. The way to turn is easy to remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. As you're pushing the screwdriver forward, if it's going clockwise, if the top of the screwdriver from your reference point is going to the right, most of the time you're tightening the screw. You're putting the screw in. If you're going counterclockwise, you're loosening. If you're going to the left, you're loosening. Okay, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's a Simple shop mnemonic that we all learn. So, all of that being said, let's cover some fundamental different types of screws that you're going to come across. Because there's really only a few you're going to come across a lot. And I'm going to show you the coolest magic trick you've seen in the past 10 minutes. So, Let's cover some basic types. First off, the single most common you're gonna come across around your house. This is a good little assortment. You can get these, I'll put them in the store. You can get them on Amazon. You can get a basic assortments of screws and every household, if, if you're the kind of person that has screwdrivers and you're gonna be fixing things, you're gonna want a couple little just assorted packs. They're really cheap. These are like five bucks a piece. Um, you're gonna want little assortments of screws. Did you ever notice all the old guys that have like jelly jars and baby food jars filled with nuts and bolts and screws, there's a reason. They come in handy. And to buy really good ones is really expensive. So these are all shaped very similarly. They have a flat head that's countersunk. You can see how the head makes a V. That means that when you run this in, that head will stay flat to the surface of whatever you're putting it in. Um, if you want to see a good example of flat countersunk screws, walk over to a door, open it up, and look at the hinges. The screws that are holding the hinges to the door of the room you're in right now are probably flat countersunk uh, screws. This is a long taper. It's sharp at the tip. It's very sharp. And it's got big, fat, wide threads to it. Okay, see how there's a lot of distance between these threads? This is a wood screw. It's designed to go in wood, which tends to be really soft and spongy. So you need a sharp cutting head and you need a point on it because you've got to be able to split the fibers as you go in. But you're going to be smart and you're going to drill pilot holes before you just go screwing new things in, right? We'll talk about that. So these are wood screws and you see they come in all different shapes and sizes, but they're all pretty much the same thing. Like from the littlest one here to the biggest one, it's still the same shape, just different sizes. So those are wood screws. Now these, 
look really similar. Like the body looks almost exactly the same. The head's different though. This is called a pan head. This head is designed to sit on top. And when you measure the overall length of the screw, like if you're buying these, these measure from the bottom of the head down to the tip, as opposed to the wood screws that measure from the flat top of the head all the way down. So this is called a sheet metal screw. They're designed to go through an already there hole in sheet metal. You drill a pilot hole through the piece of metal, and sheet metal is just thin sheets of metal, like the fender on your car is made out of sheet metal. So this is designed to hold a piece of metal to something else, and it could be two pieces of metal, it happens, um, but this is a sheet metal screw. Can you use these in wood? Absolutely, it'll totally work in wood because you still have the pointed tip, the very wide threads. It's just a different type of head. Sometimes they're made out of a slightly different type of metal, but not terribly often. It all tends to, especially if you're buying like the cheap, like five bucks and you get a big assortment of screws, they're all made out of cheese grade metal anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You can absolutely use them in wood if you have to. And there are times for that. So these are totally different. These are frequently called zip screws. Um, the proper name is, it's a self-tapping sheet metal screw or self-drilling self-tapping sheet metal screw. These are totally different. First off, we've got a hex head, so you can't do it with a Phillips head or a, a slotted screwdriver. You gotta have like a, a proper hex head or uh, even a small socket or something. But down on the end, we've got thinner threads that aren't quite as pronounced. They're a little bit closer together and they're, they're not as, as deep. And the end of this is totally weird. It's a drill bit. It really is. This is designed to drill through a thin piece of metal and so if you have like two pieces of metal next to each other and they're really thin, you can take just this screw and, and nothing else and drive this screw, you spin it really fast. Usually it's done with a power driver. You can do it by hand, but you're gonna, you're gonna hate your life for a while if you do. But you just zip this in and it drills the hole through both pieces and threads the hole and attaches them reasonably rigidly together. And if you have, uh, heating ducts in your basement. Go down in your basement and look at your ductwork, and you'll see these little heads sticking out at all the joints, and that's what holds your heating system together is self-tapping sheet metal screws or zip screws. So we can set those aside. Now, these here are called machine screws. You may have wanted to call that a bolt. Well, sometimes it is, but when? This is where it gets cool. These are called machine screws. They have very fine threads. They have a flat end, it's, it's blunt. There's no starting thread. You cannot drive this into a piece of wood. It's not going to work. You, you would need to have an existing hole there already because this won't screw itself in unless you're doing really stupid things with power tools. I know somebody's gonna comment and be like, you watch me, man, what? hold my beer. Ah, yeah, you can do it, you're an idiot. Um, this is a machine screw, and they come in every size under the sun. Here's a little tiny brass one, and here's a big pan head. This is a quarter 20. Now, when you get into machine screws, they're organized by two numbers. In this case, it's one quarter 20. That means this is one quarter inch thick in diameter, and it has 20 threads per inch, and then it'll be how long the screw is. So it'll be quarter 20 by like, I don't know, two and a half or whatever this one is, maybe three inches. So you'll see screws that are like quarter 20 by inch and a half. And that means it's a quarter inch in diameter, it has 20 threads per inch, and it's an inch and a half long. And where you measure it, like for this one, would be from the end here up to the bottom of the head. Okay, so this one's about three inches, two and a half, three inches. So. When is a bolt a bolt and when is a screw a screw? Because it gets kind of weird. I'm gonna show you. Because this is a thing that more people need to teach people about. Let's say you have two pieces of material. Can be wood, can be metal, can be plastic, glass, cheese, whatever you want. If I take 
And we're going to be polite and drill a pilot hole. And we're going to grab a wood screw because I'm going to do it right. Do I have enough links to get through that? Yeah, it'll make it. It'll be fine. So we've drilled a pilot hole. We're going to put our screw in. We're going to run that down. Now this is a wood screw. I'm going to take that all the way down and set it flush. That is a screw, okay? Because it goes through this piece and into this piece, but it doesn't come out the other side. See, it isn't just what it is, it's how it's used that determines whether it's a screw or a bolt. This is a threaded piece of metal that goes through whatever you want to hold to the thing you want to hold it to into what's called a blind hole, which means you can't see through it. Okay, that's an easy way to remember what a blind hole is. You can't see through it. If I go like this, that's a hole. If I go like that, that's a blind hole. Can't see through it, okay? So that is a screw. Now it's going to get weird. I'm going to drill a pilot hole because everything I said a minute ago about so there's going to be some guy who's like, hold my beer. Yeah, yeah. I'm... Drill a pilot hole. I grab this. Yes, I'm using power tools, and so can you. So I'm going to take this blunt end machine screw, and we're going to run that. That machine screw is at this moment a screw. It's not a wood screw, it's still a machine screw. But because it's going into a blind hole, it's a screw. Okay, now watch. This is an amazing magic trick. This is like Copperfield level. I'm going to take this machine screw out of that hole. I'm going to drill a hole in this. I had to go to a different piece of wood because I'm not long enough. Now, this hole goes through. I have a through hole as opposed to a blind hole. Right now it's a screw. Now you can see that actually countersunk the head in there. That is, that thread is engaged in the wood and it's holding together, okay? At this moment, even though it's sticking out the back a little bit, because it's just the thread holding it together, technically that's a screw. And right up until I do this, because in the blink of an eye, I'm gonna change this from a screw into a bolt. Because now we're in a through hole and Put a nut on the bottom of it. That's a bolt. Okay? And just like that, I transformed it from a screw into a bolt. A screw is used in a blind hole to hold two or more pieces of material together. A bolt is used in a through hole and usually has a nut or some kind of stopping fastener on the other side. But at that moment, that just turned from a screw into a bolt. That's really the only difference. It's more of how it's used than what it is. And don't worry, we'll talk about the impact driver in an upcoming video too. 
So we've covered the basics, how to use it, where to use it, some simple safety. We got to learn about bolts. Let's take a quick second so that you can understand some measurement stuff and uh, understand some terminology. When you're dealing with a bolt, this is a big giant railroad bolt, you've got the threads, the shoulder, and the head. The shoulder varies, and it's an important thing to take in consideration. If you need a bolt to hold two things together, some bolts, some screws, when you get them, will look like this, or like one of these. So these look exactly the same, okay? They're, they're very, very similar as far as size and threads. The heads are different though. This is a machine screw. It's got a Phillips and slotted combination head on it. This is a hex bolt. It just has a hexagonal head on it. This is usually referred to as just a bolt because you don't use this in a screw application because it'd be kind of a pain to drive like that. The shaft is the same. They're interchangeable. You can use one for the other but this is referred to as a hex bolt. In fact, this is a quarter 20 by one inch hex bolt. But you'll notice neither of these, this bolt or this screw, have a shoulder on them. This big one does. And as you get into longer ones and other sizes, you can, you'll even find them like this, this tiny, that'll have shoulders to them, because they don't thread the entire thing. So that's a really important thing to take in consideration when you're buying fasteners, is if you can't see it, if you're just ordering it by number, you want to make sure where you're going to end up with how much shoulder that has because for your application, you may need this to stick out a bit and need to tighten down to here, in which case this, this bolt wouldn't work. So it's just a thing to know about. But basic terminology is shaft and head, shoulder and thread. And if you want your own giant bolt like this, do what I did and just take a walk down the railroad tracks and you will find stuff like this all over America. Okay, so we've talked about the screwdrivers you want to have and why and all the basics, but we have to take into account this is the apocalypse. And if you only have one screwdriver that you need, because it needs to pack small, play big, you need to maximize the efficiency of your space when the zombies come or when the Rona takes us all. So if I had to pick one screwdriver to keep in my toolbox, it's going to be this. I have a jump bag of tools that I take with me on job sites. And I'm not a big guy. So it's important to me to be able to have the most possible utility with the smallest weight in the smallest space. And for that, nothing compares to this. This is the Weira 818-4-1. And it's got multiple head options because it's got just a socket in the end. It's really tight, like it, it doesn't take up a lot of space. And if you, get it excited, it does that. And you can even take this completely out and put different heads in. And this inside its base carries a whole set of really good high quality heads. It's got half a dozen different bits. You can change these out for different stuff. It comes with them so they're weird, so you know they're good quality. Weira makes some of the best screwdrivers that money can buy, like hands down. This is good German engineering. And it's really easy to just like, you need a number two Phillips. Okay, cool. You open this up, you grab your number two, you just push that right in. And you'll see these of lesser quality where they have magnets and stuff in here. The magnet bit holders suck so bad. If you're working with wood and nothing else, they're not so bad. But the minute you start working with stuff where there's metal chips around, if you're grinding or sanding metal or anything like that, the magnets, the, the little hole down in the end here, will fill up with shavings and chips and stuff. And the magnet sucks them right down in the bottom. And it makes it an absolute pain in the ass to try and use because either you'll be able to get the bit in and it ain't ever coming out because it's rammed in there with all the powdered ferrous material, um, or you can't even get it in at all. So I don't like magnetic retainers for hardware, stuff like this. Um, this works really simple. You pull it forward and it'll come out. 
Okay, if it's back, it's locked. And you can only take this out if you pull this forward. But you can put it in even if it's already locked back. There's a little ball, fancy ball retaining system in there. And that will not come out. You can shake it all you want. You're not going to lose your thing. And even if this is out like that, you can still shake it and work upside down or down below or wherever you want. Hold this in any orientation that works for you. And it's not going to fall apart. You're not going to lose things. And if you're a guy like me who spends a lot of time on a ladder or up a tower, that matters a lot. You really don't want to drop tools because you're not going to find that thing if you drop it off a ladder from 20 feet in the air. So for me, my personal favorite, my end all be all recommendation, even as much as I love Klein tools, is going to be the Weira 81841. There is, however, and you should know about it, a Klein similar multi driver. And if, if you want to go um, these are a fair bit less expensive and a lot easier to find. You know, like this is something you'll find at your big box store and stuff like that. Klein makes a multi bit, but it's this is suitable for around the house. It's a lot simpler though. Um, this carries, I think, eleven different screwdrivers in it in different forms, and you can flip things around. Like this has there's two, four, six, eight. And then on top of screwdrivers, that's a hex driver in that end and in that end and in those ends. So you've got four different size hex drivers and eight different size screwdrivers. And you can use these as hex drivers as well. So there's two, four, six different hex drivers. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, four. So I don't think you're supposed to use all these as hex drivers. Yeah, you can't use that. So this is called an 11 in 1. But I see 2, 4, 6, 8. Oh, some of these are going to be the same size because the bits are interchangeable. So that's where it gets funny. That makes sense. OK, took me a second. I was like, I see way more than 8. What the hell? Um, it's because these are different sizes. The bits all have to go in the same size hole. So those are all going to be quarter inch holes. So that gets you, even though there's four different holes there, it's only one size. But these containers are two different sizes because they'll fit in the two different ends of the thing. So that's why you end up with an odd number one. Cool. All right. That makes sense. So this is the Klein 11 in 1. It's pretty skookum. I like it. And, you know, 90% of the time you're going to be reaching for that number two Phillips anyway. And then this is the Weira. It's fancier brother. This is the blue collar version. This is your white collar version. OK, this is your fancy, serious business stuff. But really, you can get away with just a handful of basic screwdrivers as well. Or you can go with these. For me, I tend to like these for moving around and, you know, packed out. And I like I like a full size screwdriver for working in my shop or working around the house, stuff like that. It really all depends on what you're doing with the tool and we're all different. So pick what works for you. You can, of course, find all of these tools, everything that I've shown here today in the links below in the description and get them in my Amazon store. So and it helps me. I get like 5% and it doesn't cost you anything and it helps support me making the videos. So everybody wins. So I want to thank all of you guys for hanging out. I appreciate you watching and I enjoy getting to teach you some basic stuff on screwdrivers. Tune in for the next one where we'll be covering hammers. I like hammers. Um, we're going to do this through a whole wide variety of tools. If you have a specific tool or class of tool that you want to see me cover, by all means, comment below in the descriptions. One of the greatest things about making videos like this is I get to learn just as much stuff as I get to teach. So I really value your comments because a lot of people have taught me a lot of really cool stuff in the comments. And if you're watching this video, check the comments because you'll probably learn even more down there. You'll also learn a whole bunch of stuff over at the Discord. The link for that is below in the description as well. Come hang out. We can talk about tools. We can talk about making stuff. And we're happy to answer any questions that we can. As always, you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and I'll see you next time.